Alright, so I get that people who dislike size matters, though I personally do not understand why. It retains the basic Ratchet and Clank formula, though admittedly a little janky. Secret Agent Clank, however, is by far the most disjointed Ratchet and Clank game I have ever experienced thus far, and here is why. The beginning of a game helps to set the ground for the rest of it. This we all know and should expect, but Secret Agent Clank said, you know what, nah. Now, I understand it may have been a bit since you have last played the game, so first let me bring you up to speed with what happens and why it feels so disjointed. The game begins with a cutscene stating that the Eye of Infinity was stolen by none other than Ratchet himself. Okay, fair enough. Clank being the bro that he is, goes to investigate as Ratchet certainly wouldn't do something like that, right? Anyways, you are provided with a mix of combat and stealth. After everyone's favorite rhythm segment, more on that later, we can confirm that the Eye of Infinity has indeed been stolen and the clue left behind leads us off to the next destination. Now, this is where the game starts to slowly unravel itself, in my opinion. Suddenly, you are Ratchet, fighting waves of convicts in prison. This game is called Secret Agent Clank, is it not? Ratchet, we know, has been incarcerated, but the almost endless waves of convicts that he fights does nothing to further the plot. At this stage in the game, however, I wanted to give it the benefit of a doubt. The Gadgetbots then make a return and they are used to solve some puzzles to help Clank progress through the story. We are also introduced to a basic minigame of matching up two of the same color symbols in order to break a lock. Both the Gadgetbots and OmniKey puzzles are fine and as expected in the series. They fit and so far their purpose is justified. But then, this happens. After more rhythm game action, which this one tore me up, I will not lie to you, we are suddenly snowboarding down a hill. Welcome to the first active minigame, which is fun, as it's about time Clint got something that's equivalent to the good old hoverboard. Yet another problem begins to pop up. This snowboarding game is fun and all, but it simply feels like it lasts for far too long. Like, how long is this area we are escaping from? Then the game switches right back over to Ratchet for more illegal prison fighting. Why? Well, the real question is, why not? With the second round of Ratchet's fights taken care of, though his story would have been sufficient with a cutscene or two, we finally get our next stealth mission as Secret Agent Clank, and are also introduced to my favorite weapon of the game, the Tangle Vine Carnation. This plant is absolutely wild and wacky. Moving along, our job here is to follow Kingpin and skillfully take out his henchmen along the way by blending into our surroundings like a true secret agent. But we end up losing him, and something I thought didn't happen until a later game finally happens. We get to play as a man himself, baby. Captain Quark. Finally, he's doing something in the series. But for real, this was something I was not expecting. Quark having an active and playable role in the series? Say no more fam, go ahead and just sign me up. Concluding from that mission, we are in a casino, which you can't be a secret agent without one of these, and oh man, here's where it gets spicy. Midway through this level, we get switched back to Ratchet once again in prison, but at least our boy Slim is here, right? Yeah, no. Again, with the same focus as the other two times, you simply run around these arenas beating waves of enemies. At this point, it's glaringly obvious that these levels do nothing but scratch the itch of playing with Ratchet. The game then throws you back into the casino, and boys, it is here. Probably the worst segment in the game for me. The most brutal, unforgiving, rhythm mini game I have ever experienced. Now, I will be the first one to say it. There is a lot of things I am not good at, and this is definitely one of them. After finding out that the Eye of Infinity isn't at the casino after all, Clank makes like a tree and leafs in this random weird ship thingy. This plays exactly like the snowboarding game, but luckily it doesn't last that long. Then once again, something I never imagined could happen in the series does. Not only do we play as Captain Quark again, but this time, he's singing. Using my wits, I thought of a great plan. Get them all jobs, like average slums. They were not too keen on my idea, so they pulled my dance on me. I had to take a step back at this point in the game and ask myself, what in the hell am I even playing? 
Like seriously, this cannot be real, yet it is. It's not that this scenario for Quirk is out of place, but more so that it just doesn't feel like it's justified for being in the game. It feels just like the Ratchet segments, which have been interjected into the game to just simply extend its playtime. A couple more things happen, and after a level involving Clank and the Gadgetbots, we end up yet again with Ratchet. Now, I have no issues giving credit where it is due, and here it had me cracking up. We got our boy Ratchet out here fighting enemies, butt naked. We talk in Lombax cheeks for days. High Impact Games even included some sensor bars for him and his foes. Now, this had me cracking up as it really touched on the more comedic side of the series, which outside of a few scenes in this game, it has been quite void of. Though this would have been much better served as an easter egg or reward for beating the game in my opinion, but hey, don't come for me. The last third of the game involves another level with Captain Quark saving some space nuns from a tentacle monster. Once again man, <sighs> just like the previous level with Quark, this entire segment just feels pointless other than telling us that Quark and Clank were almost at the same place at the same time. We then transform into Giant Clank, and after beating the two Mega Rocks, the game, I'm actually just going to skip over it this time. The game switches back to Ratchet in prison once again, and then into this bizarre mini game of Quark in some cowboy attire, trying to protect a dam in who knows where and for who knows what. Keep in mind, this game is called Secret Agent Clank. The ending of the game then concludes after one more Gadgetbot mission, followed by Clank's not-so-secret infiltration into Clunk's base and roll credits. Yes, people, that is the end of the game. So, with the events of the game wrapped up, hopefully you can understand why the game done in this form is just terrible. You see, my problem with this game has nothing to do with Clank, the Gadgetbots, the snowboarding, or even the rhythm minigames. My problem is with Ratchet and Quark. The Ratchet segments in their entirety should have just been cutscenes and not gameplay as it does nothing to move the plot forward with any significance. Outside of a battle or two, the same could be said for Quark. If they would have focused on Quark trying to rescue Ratchet, I think his impact would have been better than what we got. I appreciate both Ratchet and Quark, so do not get me wrong here, but in context of this game, their contributions feel like padding. By switching this game up with so many mini-games and spreading the experience of Secret Agent Clank between three characters, it really robs Clank of his time in the spotlight. I cannot say I'm a big fan of stealth-based games, but with a title like Secret Agent Clank, I was expecting that to be its main focus. Yet by the end of the game, stealth is out of the window and we are just blasting our way through literally everything. It really derails the experience of the entire game, as after each Clank segment is completed, I have to wonder if I'm going to be back fighting with Ratchet or with Quark for literally no reason at all. It is an incredible shame for this game as well, since its production value, when compared to size matters, is much better. The areas look more vibrant and interesting. The level design isn't just basic platforming, because stealth is also thrown in there, at times. The weapons Clank gets are refreshing and not the same old same old. Giving the Gadgetbots a more prominent role in the game as well really helped to make the game feel like this is a Clank game, not a Ratchet and Clank game. It, however, suffers from a bizarre mix of pointless Ratchet and Quark levels that do nothing but subtract from the experience. Overall, looking back at this game and playing it now, I can confidently answer the question I seek to answer in all of my videos. Is Secret Agent Clank still worth the play? It's definitely a no for me, dog.